Thank you, Buffalo families, for joining us on this October Buffalo Pride meeting. I'm your Pride president, Erin Natalino. We have some great content in store for you and hope you enjoy. Good evening, Buffalo families. We hope you're having a great year so far. I'm Courtney Gage, your Buffalo Pride Vice President. I just wanted to do a quick recap of our stewardship Saturday last September. We had over 100 folks come out, including students. I think we had about 20 high school students, and we even had even younger children, which was great to have. Um, we really appreciate your participation, and that was one of my favorite events, and we hope to see you at the next one next spring. Good evening, this is Amy Johnson, your Pride Secretary. I wanted to remind you of some upcoming PI opportunities. We have the Closet Clutter coming up on October 16th. Get with your child's club for more information on that. We also have the Basket Auction coming up on November 13th, and you should receive more information from your student's teacher. Good evening, VCS parents. I'm John Spittler, safety specialist. I'm Tom Jakes, safety specialist. And I'm Tara Milo. I oversee admissions, campus logistics, and work with our safety team. The charter school has students, staff, and faculty safety and security as an ongoing top priority. It's under continuous review with upgrades and improvements implemented as necessary. The Villages Charter School will share, inform, and update students, staff, parents, and the community of timely information in the area of safety, security, and mental health services. VCS strives to provide a world-class education with a dedicated and concerned staff in a safety-secured, worry-free environment. Safety is our top priority. Safety protocols in place for the 2021-22 school year we have one school resource officer, a Sumter County Sheriff's Deputy, assigned to each building working from 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. And we have another school resource officer working from 2.30 to 10.30 p.m. patrolling the entire campus. The school resource officer, supervisor, and administrator will be in and around campus on a regular basis. Several more cameras have been added in strategic locations throughout the campus. These cameras are monitored by the safety specialists, administrators, and the school resource officers. And in order to enforce the need for all students to wear their picture ID cards at all times while on campus, we ask parents to encourage their students to wear them, wear their ID cards as an important part of the safety initiatives and is required as part of the VCS dress code. The Village Charter School will conduct active assailant drills each month as required by law. These drills will be will vary in scope and as detailed and will have import and participation from the Sumter County Sheriff's Department. The Fortify uh, tip line website is now bookmarked on all students' Chromebooks and school computers for easy access. This allows students and parents to submit an anonymous tip concerning anything that might affect students or school safety. There are fortified posters displayed in buildings as required by law in each of our Villages Charter School buildings. We constantly emphasize the importance of school safety and encourage positive, proactive dialogue and suggestions from and between students and staff. We are expecting another banner year for all at the Villages Charter School. We take a great deal of pride in what we do, who we are, and how we do it. Hi, my name is Lieutenant Lawrence Wynn. I am a lieutenant with the Sumter County Sheriff's Office. I am in charge of the School Resource Division. As you know, we have a SRO, School Resource Officer, at each one of the Villages Charter Schools. At the Villages High School, I have Deputy Brandon Sullivan. At the Villages Middle School, I've have, I have Deputy Holly 
Eckstein. At the Village's fourth and fifth grade center, I have Deputy Blair Rutz. At the Village's Intermediate School, I have a new one, and her name is Deputy Christine Peters. And at the Village's Primary School, I have Deputy Dennis Henry. And most of you may not know, but we have a deputy that works from 2 p.m. to 10 p.m., which we call our floater, and his name is Deputy Trevor Laviano. That is my team, including my sergeant, who is under me when I am not available. He takes charge of the school resource division. His name is Sergeant Joey Moodyham. Hello, my name is Shannon Sprouse and I'm the school counselor here at the 4th and 5th grade center. And today I want to share with you the conflict resolution program we teach our students here at the elementary level. The school counselors at VCS Elementary teach our students how to use a conflict resolution program called Kelso's Choices for grades kindergarten through third and KC's Choices for grades fourth and fifth. They learn the difference between a small problem and a big problem. We teach our students how to solve small problems on their own using the wheel of choices. We also discuss problems that need the help of a trusted adult, big problems or small problems that keep happening with the same person after trying to solve them on their own. Kelso's choices or Casey's choices can be used everywhere and by adults too. Please visit the counselor's individual websites to view a grade level video for your child. Let's all work together to help encourage and reinforce these skills with your children at home and school. Hey there, we're the school counselors at the Villages Charter Middle School. I'm Allison Anderson. I've been here for 13 years at the charter school and I'm currently the eighth grade school counselor for the 21-22 school year. Hi, I'm Christina Gallet. I'm the seventh grade school counselor. All my kids call me Miss Tina. Um, I've been at the charter school for eight years and this is my fifth year as a school counselor. And I'm Steven Skowicki. I'm the sixth grade counselor this year and this is my first year with the charter school. October is National Bully Prevention Month, and we have a few ways that we address this topic each year. On October 4th, every student was asked to wear their blue school polo to show their support in stopping bullying. Every student who remembered to wear their blue polo was entered into a drawing to win a dress down day on October 8th. 
We also do morning announcements during the first full week of October to discuss the different kinds of bullying and how to stop it if you see it happening. We also created physical and digital visuals to hang in our hallways and put up in classrooms on our new smart board technology to go along with our morning announcements. We also planned for the Student Council to incorporate National Bullying Prevention Month into their pep rallies later in October by reminding everyone that charter school students, teachers, and staff need to continually embody our core values of hard work, stewardship, creativity, and hospitality. Our continued focus helps remind everyone that we should make every person who enters our campus feel welcome and safe. According to our school handbook, bullying is any pattern of behavior by a student or a group of students that is intended to harass, intimidate, ridicule, or instill fear in another student or group of students. Bullying behavior can be a threat, physical harm, or verbal abuse of another student. Bullying is defined as a repeated, systematic occurrence or a series of reoccurring actions committed over a period of time directed toward one student or successive separate actions directed against multiple students. One of the biggest questions I think we see in middle school is the dilemma of deciding what is teasing versus bullying and how to know the difference between the two. Most of the time a student says they are being bothered or they throw out that B word, bully. It's really just two kids teasing each other back and forth until one student crosses the line, neither upsets or offends the other student. Here's a clip from StopBullying.gov that can help you see the differences. Let's be real. Kids tease each other all the time. How can I tell the difference between teasing and bullying? In bullying, one kid or a group of kids make threats, spread rumors, attack someone physically or verbally, and exclude another. There's a power imbalance in bullying that can be pretty hurtful. Yeah, sometimes kids can tease back and forth like a game. If the person being teased says it bothers them and it feels like bullying, then it probably is. You can always ask. Bullying also happens a lot with the same people. They want to make that one person feel really bad about themselves. StopBullying.gov has a lot of really helpful resources. Another big conflict we have to address is cyberbullying. Cyberbullying takes place over digital devices like cell phones, computers, and tablets. Cyberbullying can happen over text, on apps, or online in social media, forums, or gaming. Cyberbullying includes sending, posting, or sharing negative, harmful, false, or mean content about someone else. It can include sharing personal or private information about someone else, causing embarrassment or humiliation. Some cyberbullying crosses the line into unlawful or criminal behavior. Students feel like they can hide behind their screens and say whatever they want to say. Our biggest nemesis right now is TikTok. We have a few ways to address conflict resolution at the Village's Charter Middle School. The first and best way we encourage our students to do is to talk to their peers about what is bothering them. If the student doesn't feel like talking to this person will solve the issue or they do not know where to begin, we have multiple ways a student can reach out for help. Students can ask any teacher to come speak to a school counselor. The teacher will call to see if we are available. A student can email their counselor directly or a student can use the Bothers Me box. The Bothers Me box is a fantastic tool that allows our students to submit issues virtually anywhere at any time and the slip gets sent directly to the appropriate counselor via email. A few years ago, we decided it was time to make the Bothers Me box digital, so now every student is introduced to the Bothers Me box in sixth grade and given access to a Google Classroom, which is dedicated to their grade level and giving students the Bothers Me box form. Last year, as a sixth grade counselor, I had 144 Bothers Me box slips submitted in six months. So far this year, with that same group of students, I have 35 slips from the beginning of the year, which is almost one per day. Our students are definitely invested in this tool to help them find solutions to their issues or to whatever is bothering them. There are two main reasons a student might submit a Bothers Me box. Either they need help with their own problems, such as troubles with family or grades, an issue with a teacher, troubles with friends or even non-friends, or troubles with themselves, 
such as feeling overly stressed out, really sad, angry, or even overwhelmed. They could also just have a question. The second main reason a student often submits a bothers me box is if they see someone else being bothered. We encourage students that if they see something, to say something and speak up against issues that arise. And we tell students we will keep their name confidential when we can. Our students have many opportunities to let us know if they are being bothered. And if they see something, say something. We have a great body of students that want to stand up for themselves or to help their peers around them. Once the conflict is reported, school counselors go through the steps to make sure that this student isn't bothered again. Sometimes that means a schedule change. Sometimes that means peer mediation. Sometimes that means administration stepping in and investigating the concern and delivering consequences. Whatever it may be, school counselors always have the best interest at heart for their students. And we need their help in letting us know when conflicts arise. Thank you so much for your time. Hello, my name is Darren Beavis. I'm a vice principal at the Villages High School. And I've been asked to provide this segment on bullying prevention and conflict re resolution. Some of the questions often asked are, what is bullying and what works to prevent bullying? What is conflict resolution? And how are schools addressing these issues? First to define bullying, the definition states that one is one who seeks to harm, intimidate, or coerce someone perceived as vulnerable. Usually bullying is repeated over time and can take on many different forms. At VHS, we have a zero tolerance to bullying and we're always actively working to prevent bullying. What does work, what is required to reduce bullying in school is nothing less than a change in the school's climate and in the norms for behavior. This requires a comprehensive school-wide effort involving the entire school community. Included in this action is some of the following. Teaching students to advocate for themselves and for others raising awareness, positive parental support, a very proactive approach, integrated curricular approach, education in the dangers of bullying, social networking, and cyberbullying. Some tools that students can use to help with bullying often include conflict resolution. The first step of conflict resolution is first to have students, they have to be able to cool off. Before problem solving can even begin, the students need time to cool down. The next step is for students to share, listen, and to check. Students need to listen to each other, share their issues, and then check that they understand them clearly. Finally, in conflict resolution, students must take responsibility. Usually both parties have some active part in conflict. They must brainstorm solutions, choose a solution that's best fitted for the situation, and there must be follow-ups to make sure that that solution is being followed through. Students are also addressing these issues in a variety of ways. Some of these ways are increased efforts to raise awareness about bullying, investigating, reporting, and tracking different bullying reports, a zero tolerance, as I stated earlier, social skills training for targets, individual and group counseling, mediation, and as I spoke earlier about conflict resolution, curricular approaches at the VHS. Um, these can include the freshman hope classes where they will also deal with bullying issues, um, an all campus Buffalo Charge program and Know the Law, which is also a program that is incorporated with the Sumter County Sheriff's Office. Also, education on the dangers of social networking and cyberbullying. Well, that wraps up our, our segment on uh, bullying and conflict resolution. Uh, I hope you found uh, the segment to be informational. I know it was brief, but um, I hope you did find some, some good in it. Um, the last slide here kind of provides some contact information for anyone who ever needs to get in touch with us. Um, the Villages High School uh, counselors are listed. Um, their information and contact information can also be found on the TBCS 
uh, web page uh, under our teacher connection page. Uh, Ms. Nicole Lake, uh, Mrs. Meredith Rock, and Ms. Amy Hinges are the, the counselors at the Villages High School. Um, and again, I hope you uh, found this short segment to be um, brief and, inf and informational. But uh, like I said, uh, this is our, our contact information if, if uh, that was ever needed by anyone. Um, again, I thank you for your time and uh, we'll talk to you later. Thank you. How to disagree with people. Not that you need any help. There's lots of stuff to disagree on if you're looking for it. Cake versus pie. Apples or oranges. This sports team versus this sports team. Which movie star is better? Ryan Goose Baby or Charming Tater? I don't know. Some people even argue for tree. You're just standing there, huh? Listen to this opinion. I got an opinion. Who am I to judge, though? Maybe that tree says something about his mama. I'm just saying, some people just get worked up about anything. Even One Direction, they're not all going the same direction anymore. Bye-bye, Zane. Everyone loved you. You broke everyone's heart. Bye-bye. <laughs> Some people argue about which animal is better. Cat, dog, elephant, or donkey. Eh? Anyway. <laughs> okay, okay. You're not always going to agree. Even with the most agreeable person in the world. Just saying. Just saying. So look, in a world with so many things to disagree on, we gotta learn how to disagree without making everybody feel terrible. Step one, treat people like they're people, people. I know, seems pretty simple. But in a heated argument, you can forget that you're talking to a person, a human being, someone who has a heartbeat. Unless you're arguing with a tree, um, that's, that's a whole other problem. I can't help you there. Step two, listen, listen, listen. Listen, before trying to change someone's opinion, take time to listen to them, even if what they say does not make sense. That's the power of treating someone like a person. You gotta hear them out. You got two ears and one nose for a reason. You gotta listen more than you smell. I'm pretty sure that's not right. Keep listening. Step three, pause, breathe, love. When you disagree, you're gonna want to do some crazy stuff, like yell, or write and release a whole entire album outlining that you're right and they're wrong. Don't do it. Instead, you gotta pause, breathe, love. It's okay to disagree. It's not okay to be mean. Don't say it until you can say it with love. There's plenty of legit stuff to be mad at in the world. This life stuff, it's hard. Let's not just spend our time here being mad at each other. You don't have to see eye to eye to work shoulder to shoulder, people. Good evening, parents, and welcome to our virtual Buffalo Pride meeting. So at the elementary school, uh, and nationwide, on October 4th was National Stomp Out Bullying Day. And it's certainly a day that we emphasize the importance of kindness and that bullying is not accepted here or shouldn't be anywhere and uh, specifically talk about it. Our students were encouraged to wear their blue uniform shirt and our staff to wear a blue shirt to go along with this year's national theme of Blue Up. I'll be there for you. Our school counselors gathered resources and gave those to the teachers. And uh, so again, it's a national day to emphasize that. But every day here at the charter school, we emphasize our core values of hospitality and the importance of being nice and kind to each other. So we're very excited that for our second nine weeks, it's coming up in October, we are going to be able to start having our fifth grade safety patrols and our third grade hospitality helpers. Now these students are selected by their teachers. The list is reviewed by administration. And for those important roles. We are looking for students that display our core values and have excellent leadership skills. They also have to be students that are not afraid to appropriately speak to a peer uh, about possibly slowing down, walking safely in the hallway, uh, possibly 
reminders to tuck in their shirts, uh, different things like that. So they have to be able to do that in a, an appropriate manner. Some kids are way too shy and won't to do that at all. So uh, the teachers talk with them and sometimes students will say, mm, no, I'll pass. Uh, so anyway, we're very excited that we'll get to start that up starting with the second nine weeks. And then a different group of boys and girls, again, this is third grade and fifth grade, a different group of children will be selected each nine week grading period. And then first graders are in for a treat because the Villages Fire Department is coming on October 8th for uh, Fire Safety Month, and they'll be doing the fire safety program with the first graders. And that usually always includes getting to spray that big fire hose. And we have holiday pictures scheduled for October 20th. Again, that is totally optional. So more information will be sent home, but if parents if you don't want your child photographed for that please just let the teacher know again the note will tell you about the attire boys and girls can dress in different clothing uh, they can wear jeans and a shirt you want them to wear or they can wear uh, the girls sometimes like to dress up in their pretty dresses uh, but again we do need athletic tennis shoes sneakers the regular school shoes because we have PE and recess and there's no time for 20 24 kids to change shoes before picture time so that's October 20th. And then last but not least, we're having our annual, the Buffalo Pride is having the annual basket benefit. That is where the school has a auction an auction, a live auction, and a silent auction. And all of our teachers have submitted and have a theme for their basket they're putting together. And so hopefully you've heard of this uh, because they are asking parents to donate an item for their basket. So let's just say, Possibly Mrs. James' class, I don't know, but I know in the past she's had the gator-themed basket. So even you Seminole fans, maybe you could still pitch in and donate a, a gator item or maybe even a generic football item if you can't bring yourself to buying something uh, blue and and orange. Uh, so please look for that information from the homeroom teachers. And if, if everybody in the class donates one item, they'll end up with a wonderful basket and all the proceeds come right back to the school. Hope you have a great month. Welcome to the October Buffalo Pride meeting. I am Peggy Irwin, principal at the middle school, and it's a pleasure to be here. Okay, we have a lot going on, so just want to remind you that October 7th, that is October 7th, is the last day of the first marking period. That ends the first marking period. So please make sure that you're checking your child's grades. Please make sure that you are making sure that they have met their AR goal and that they are making up any test or quizzes that they missed due to quarantine or just regular absences. So it's vitally important that your kids finish that first quarter strong. Okay, we're winding down with our uh, fall sports. That's volleyball. Our last home match will be on Monday, August, sorry, October 4th, and it's going to be a great game. It is against two undefeated teams. The Villages Charter Middle School Gold Team is undefeated, and so is Crystal River. So please come out and enjoy. The tickets are $3 apiece, and we are always looking for volunteers for our concession stand and ticket. And if you're interested, you can call our front office. Okay, the last home football game, last football game is a home match, but it's on a Thursday, October 14th. So again, we were always looking for volunteers to work the concession stand and sell tickets. So if you're interested, please contact our front office. Okay, we have... Um, our NJHS induction coming up in November, and we have also made the choice for our spring, sorry, winter musical, and that's going to be Frozen Junior, so we're looking forward to that.
We have a lot of events planned. And again, make sure that your children are taking advantage of our homework labs. We have a homework lab every morning on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays from 7.20 to 7.50. They can go and finish their homework. I have a homework lab every afternoon from 3.30 to 5.15, Monday through Friday, and it is by grade level. So the students just get a pass from aftercare and they go to the lab. So if your children are coming home and they have not completed their homework, you need to tell them you need to go to that computer lab or that homework lab. It is important and they can get it all done and then they can have a free evening. So we are doing lots of things to make sure that all of our kids are on task and that they are moving through the school year very successfully. We appreciate all of your cooperation and help with everything that you do for us. And have a great evening. Good evening. The first nine weeks is coming to an end and it's been a great start to the year. School grades have been out for a couple weeks and VHS earned its 15th A in a row. I just want to thank the VHS faculty, staff, students, and parents for all their hard work, dedication, and determination in making this happen. We're all currently working harder than ever to make sure that the streak continues and that we are filling learning gaps that have been created over the past couple of years. VHS is offering tutoring in the morning, afternoon, and on Saturday for the academic A day to make sure that we are filling those learning gaps. Our goal is to increase learning gains in all areas, especially in our core classes. Homecoming week was last week, and each day had a specific theme that students were encouraged to participate in to display school spirit. I've been at VHS for five years, and it was the best homing, homecoming week to date. Students had a great time participating in the daily activities, Homecoming week continued with the Powder Puff football game with the senior class winning 21 to nothing over the junior class. The Buffalo took home the win in the homecoming football game, defeating Hernando High in a resounding 42-15 win. Buffalo are 5-0 and on the season. Homecoming week was topped off on Saturday night with the fall ball homecoming dance, which was a huge success with record attendance. A great time was had by all that attended. All our fall sports teams are, have been super successful this year. Uh, bowling teams are experiencing an excellent season. The boys are 8-3, and three, girls are 9-2, and two, with an overall 17-5 and five combined record. Cross country are consistently putting runners from both the boys and the girls in the top 10 and have done well in all four meets. Boys golf, they're 11-6. The girls are 10-1, and one, having an excellent season. 21-7, uh, and seven, a com combined record on our golf teams. Swim, the boys are 2-3. and three. Girls are 5-0 and oh with the overall team record of 5-1. and one. Girls varsity volleyball are 12-2, and two, and they're currently ranked 13th in the state in 4A. JV record is 9-4. and four. Uh, What a great job so far by our student athletes. They're working hard in the classroom and on the field. Uh, parents, please continue to look for upcoming events on the VHS website, Skyward, and Hot Topics so that you and your, ch your children can stay up to date on all the happenings and events at VHS. Have a great evening.